to see a front I haven't been involved with standards since ever since I was in grad school really. Starting with you know multibus and VME bus and PCI bus and various disk interfaces, network interfaces, uh, uh, and so on. So the, the whole industry, I think, has a very proud tradition of how uh, ever since computing turned into a competitive multi-vendor kind of industry, how these standards have accelerated um, uh, innovation and, and uh, benefited customers. Uh, and uh, that, that work really started in the late 70s or mid 70s and accelerated in the 80s and 90s. And then with the advent of open source software, the first example of which being uh, the original Unix, then Berkeley, BSD, and Linux, uh, all the various networking stacks, and you know the more recent Apache and Java and all of this, uh, there was a similar advance in innovation on the software side, which if you think back, you know, where would we be if we hadn't had all these pieces and everybody would be stuck with some proprietary vertical stack offered by a single company. But uh, what has been missing here um, is, is a standard at the system level, surprisingly. So if you think about the, the history of, of servers in particular, you know, back in the 80s we had these you know, gray uh, plastic package boxes that didn't even fit in the rack. Then in the 90s, a big advance was that's built servers that you can actually put into a 19-inch rack. So the first standard out there was actually the 19-inch rack mount. And then more, more recently, in the last, you know, say 10 years, people really focused on on the main servers and sort of chassis that could have mobile uh, servers plugged in. Uh, but every vendor out there, and you know, my, my previous company not uh, any different than any others, built their own version and they, they were different. And they came down to, you know, my blades are better than your blades, or my fans have less power consumption than your fans, and so on. Um, what is missing here is a standardization at the system level that uh, takes away what uh, I would call gratuitous differentiation. Gratuitous differentiation is the kind of thing where you know, vendors invest a lot to have a better rate controller or a better BIOS or a better iBOM or whatever it is, but it, it makes it different than the other vendor, and as a result, the products are actually not fully interoperable with each other from the customer's perspective. And there's nothing more frustrating to a customer than getting yet another box in that has yet another bit that's different than the previous box and the old application doesn't work, but they have to you know, do something else to make that happen. So um, um, the, um, the current status quo, you know, quite frankly, uh, benefits more the vendor than the customer. And um, part of the problem is that once the industry went down this way, there is an enormous investment in what I would call backwards compatibility. So once people start with their own iLong and rate controller and so on, they have to keep it going, which means that it will never converge, right? Um, so that has not solved the problem for the scale-out crowd. And um, uh, as a result, the, the best known, largest web companies out there ended up building their own servers. I mean, they, they all looked at this and they realized and concluded that it, there's no benefit to getting vertically locked in into some piece of hardware, there's a piece of software, and then I get the source code, and then there's a bug, and then you don't know what to do. So um, literally all the large-scale uh, uh, scale data centers out there are built on off-the-shelf motherboards with stripped-down hardware, you know, Velcro, whatever it is, to make it simple to service, simple to package. Um, now, unfortunately, because there was no standards, everybody had to do their own thing, right? So the, the Google racks look different than the Facebook racks, which look different than the Amazon racks, and so on. And, and that actually doesn't help the economics here. It would be much better if there was a standard that everybody could just use. So the reason I'm so excited about this open compute initiative here is that this is the first time we have a truly open system level standard that allows companies to not have to reinvent this level of uh, ranked definition and just go with something that is already optimized, proven to be the most power efficient and, and cost efficient way of getting this done. Um, so, the, and again, this is really courtesy of Facebook, which I think deserves uh, credit here for not only coming up with the idea, but contributing the, the uh, initial designs here to this effort, and having spent a lot of energy on uh, arriving at very power-optimized, very cost-effective designs, and then letting the, uh, the rest of the world uh, use these designs. Uh, but it is true that this principle could be expanded, and 
uh, you know, I, I noticed, uh, I got a email this morning from people in China who want to join now because they never realized there was actually truly a global standard for data center X. So, um, in this new world, uh, we do believe the, the overall effect will be very similar to what we've seen in, in open source software, where, you know, the innovation that we're seeing at the system level, they wouldn't be possible without open source. People would have to rebuild their vertical stacks over and over and over, and there's, there's no benefit to that. And there's a similar thinking that in hardware, you know, people can focus on what is true innovation, you know, how do we get to it even larger scales and more efficient deployments, compared to the previous gratuitous differentiation that would be a huge benefit. So, um, one big difference in the web world is that the, the scale is just fundamentally different. You know, and historically, server is sold one server at a time, Late chess they had you know, 10 or 14 or 16 days of time. Uh, the unit of deployment has clearly racks, or maybe multiple racks. But more importantly, everything needs to be optimized for scale. Uh, power consumption is a huge deal uh, because that's, that's a permanent OPEX. Ease of deployment, ease of service are big things because you want to minimize the people in the data center. So uh, part of the innovation focuses on the scale uh, aspect. Um, I should also mention that the, the open compute uh, group here is, is not a new standards group, right? It's not our goal to reinvent things that already exist. Uh, it will leverage all the work that's out there from any open standards group uh, in the industry and, and really complement it uh, in, in areas where no standards exist yet. Uh, it's also not a customer panel. Uh, there's another group known as the Open Data Center Alliance, which now has 300 plus members, and they're doing a wonderful job to, to collect customer feedback and. In fact, uh, OCP is strategically aligned with that uh, alliance group uh, because, again, there is a, a large voice of the customer in that group that talks about what other people uh, are worried about. Uh, and finally, OCP is not a marketing organization, right? So we're not. There's nothing to sell here. It's an open. It's a dollar work. It's a nonprofit. It is an organization that is to help the vendors and the customers uh, to uh, be, uh, to connect. Um, and it will not work unless there's a benefit, right? So the idea here is uh, vendors benefit because it's a larger potential market. Uh, customers benefit because they arrive at much more cost-effective designs and they don't have to worry about getting lost in some proprietary uh, stack. But clearly, the path forward here is a, is a close collaboration between uh, customer needs and what, what's possible on the technology side. And again, the focus will always be an open standard. You know, and I don't have a proprietary goal in my body, so um, OCP will add to that. So the kind of thing uh, you know, we, uh, Facebook has been doing, and is now part of the open uh, compute spec, is very, very power efficient racks that are really optimized for power consumption, power efficiency, cooling at the large scale. Uh, the current rack is actually a triple rack, uh, so uh, it's just less weight, less, uh, uh, less cost. Um, the, you see the blue boxes left and right are the, the UPS uh, designs, which are part of the spec. Uh, in, in future versions, they will be integrated uh, in what type of the specs. Um, and uh, you know, this is a somewhat dated picture, but uh, you may remember the good old days. You know, people had a mainframe and they descended the tape drives and uh, raised floors and very efficient cooling. Um, so uh, again, a lot of data centers today have more racks in it, but they're actually not that much bigger. Uh, the kind of data center. Uh, this is this is the real picture of the artist's conception. Anyway, this is the the uh, Facebook uh, Oregon Panel Data Center, which has 3,000 square feet, rooms for lots and lots of servers. Uh, the, the exact number is not, not published, but it's it's a lot. But more importantly, it has a power efficiency of 1.07. What this means is that for each 107 watts of power coming in, 100 watts go to the server, and only seven watts are used for overhead, initial overhead for the facility including cooling. This is a world record, and this was only achieved, of course, with ambient cooling. There's no chillers here. The air comes in and out uh, as, as we go. But one uh, reason this is possible is that the entire infrastructure, starting with the RAM, was designed for an efficient operation. And um, if you look inside this data center, uh, it's all nice blue LED lighted, so it's very cool lighting. Uh, but uh, the, the hot iron is completely contained, so you can see this behind the, the curtain there in the, in the center, where the hot air gets sort of moved out of the building and there's no raised floors, it's a concrete slab. It, is very, it was a very cost-effective, very efficient design. And um, 
you know, this is uh, what you write, that if you think about the problem from scratch and you don't hire an army of consultants, consultants that want to sell the most expensive gadgets. So um, this is kind of the future of, of efficiency and, and uh, large-scale uh, designs in data centers. Now, um, even with all the effort that has been spent on this so far, it is still surprisingly hard to get one of these things uh, into operation. There's just tons of issues, uh, you know, there's just not enough sort of standardization, vendor supply, uh, supply chain things that are really optimized for this kind of design. And um, it all requires thoughtful inspection, you know, what's the best choices at each level, and ultimately open specs where the industry can rally around and say this is the new standard of how to do this. Um, now, uh, back to history here. So, uh, progress always happens when people get frustrated about something. I remember that the PCI bus actually emerged because three different PC windows ended up with three different stands for the bus slots. And this was like in the late 80s, early 90s, and obviously that didn't benefit anyone. And the current example of this is literally blade servers where every blade is different out there. And, um, and also the large scale data center, you can just get into a lot of custom design issues because it's not an open standard so far. Um, so, progress um, uh, using 40 volts for primary power distribution directly to the rank eliminates a whole chain of transformers, inefficiency, copper, etc. Integrating the UPS right in the rank eliminates yet more copper and more cost. Um, designing for power efficient cooling. <coughs> It really has been at the system level, at the, almost at the data center level. And um, you know, one of the numbers uh, I, I was totally surprised is that the power consumption of the fans in the typical uh, Facebook open compute server is only 6 watts. Now compare this to any commercial product that has you know, 20 or 30 watts just cooling power per server. It's an astonishing improvement, right? But this is only possible because the whole system was thought through. And uh, uh, later today we'll uh, talk, discuss in detail what's, uh, you know, what's on the roadmap here for Nation Show Rex. But just to whet your appetite, uh, one of the things that really attacked my attention was the zero U UPS. So just imagine you don't have any separate UPSs, but the, the lithium battery is right, it's like a flat thing right in the rank. And it would be so much nicer if the battery, they have fewer failure points and, and yet more efficiency on the floor space. Um, so um, there are lots of opportunities for innovation. I just want to focus on three that, that came to mind when I wrote these slides. Uh, one is uh, high density CPUs, uh, another one is integrated fabrics and rack top storage. Um, as you know, there's a lot of industry interest in really low power CPUs, and uh, the good folks at ARM are doing, you know, talking about 5 watt uh, subsystems. Well, you could have 100 of these in a single uh, rack shelf. and you know, of maybe 3,000 per rack. So uh, this may not work for everybody, but there's certainly interest to either have uh, low power CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, in very dense optimized configurations in as, as accelerators for games or whatever people want to do uh, in these high density racks. Another interesting topic is uh, fabrics. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, this is a network connected thing, but when you have 100 CPUs in the box, how do you Hook them together. You know, you could use PCI bus, make a simple, you know, yellow cable layer to kind of Ethernet thing. Uh, something that's really cheap, really inexpensive, but that sort of performs the first level of connectivity, and that may be on the future CPU chip, most importantly. So that's that's going to be important. And the final one, rack up storage, or just uh, shared storage that can be used by more than one server. The current uh, primary model in, in, in the web is that people use directly attached SATA disks which works, but there's the problem with the server fails, you can't get to the data, and then you have to replicate the data, and so on and so on. So it's actually more efficient to have larger uh, arrays of, of disks or, or flash in the future that would be cross-connected to all the servers in the ranks. So I think that would be very interesting to people who want to improve the efficiency of storage, performance of storage, uh, throughput of storage, but again, it has to be designed at the rank level to, to be meaningful. Um, so, uh, what this means for the industry is that uh, nobody is excluded here, everybody can participate, and uh, there is room for lots of innovation. Um, uh, the focus again is on web scale, solving the problem that works in the large scale, on power efficiency, uh, cost performance, and um, uh, one last point here, which is this is for people who know what they're doing. Uh, the, this is not for everybody, right? So, if, if you need support from your local vendor, please call your existing suppliers and, and they do that for a living. Uh, but for the people who need tens of thousands of services at a time, 
uh, this is a very, very efficient uh, model to go. And uh, in summary, uh, you know, this is a momentous time in history where you know uh, uh, Facebook has decided to truly open up and, and release all the specs and form an organization that will carry this forward. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud to be associated with this effort. Uh, again, I've been a fan of open standards all my life. And uh, the focus on large-scale problems is key because that's exactly the problem that has not been solved efficiently uh, so far outside of a few large companies. Uh, so thank you for being part of this. And uh, with this, I go back to Frank.